Welcome to this episode of First Home Hustle. I'm Kim McCarty. And I'm Dave Stahl. Today we're going to talk about the importance of getting multiple opinions on perhaps your loan, your um, insurance, and even inspectors, realtors, all of it. So let's kind of dive into it and talk. Let's start with loans and why it's important to get maybe multiple opinions on the loan. So most agents, from what I've seen, send out multiple options for, you know, different companies, different loan officers to talk to. Yeah. And a lot of times what I hear is that people will call one lender and stop. Okay. And I I do a lot of different loans for a lot of different scenarios and I get turned downs from other lenders and there's just, there's just different lenders have different parameters and sometimes slightly different guidelines. So even though maybe FHA, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, or, you know, whatever the program is, have a set guideline, right. some of them have more restrictive guidelines than the actual guideline, and some of them just go by the guideline. So, and, and there's some underwriters who just don't want to work past an easy loan. Okay. So it, it's important from my perspective that people are getting multiple opinions, especially when somebody says, oh, this is going to be difficult, and you know that's cue for you're getting a higher rate. Uh, difficult, higher, higher rate. rate. Okay. So you know, when people say stuff like that that lead a consumer in a direction, that consumer should be willing to listen, but they should also be willing to get a second and maybe third opinion. Okay. And if you hear the same thing two or three times, mm-hmm. it's likely reality. Okay. So, and, and that's, you know, from, from a lender perspective, I, I see that all the time. And, you know, sometimes it's disheartening because, you know, somebody might be getting a higher rate than what they deserve because somebody convinced them that they deserve that rate. So as a consumer, you know, it's imperative that don't just call one lender, call a couple just to, just to confirm that the information's the same. Okay. So when you talk about that, like you talk about different lending programs or what they might qualify for. I know a lot of buyers will ask me, well, does your lender do all the programs or have access to all the programs? Well, the answer is you probably don't have access to all the programs, but reality is the ones that they most likely would need or qualify for, you have access to. What would be a program that maybe you wouldn't have access to that you could then refer them to someone that might have that? Well, I, I'll refer people out in a lot of scenarios where if it's a land loan that they're getting or if they call and they want to do a, a second lien for home improvements or you know stuff like that. Because even though those are programs that I have, I don't look at it from just what I have. I look at it from the perspective of what service am I providing? And, and the knowledge that you have. Right. Well, the, the service that I'm providing is sharing that knowledge and making sure that I'm giving people the right information and good information. Right. And, you know, at the end of the day, as a service provider, if you're doing that, it doesn't matter whether you get the business or not. People look at you as a trusted resource rather than somebody's trying to sell something. And I think that right. that's, that's part of the reason why we do this right. is to talk to people about you know, thing, things that are valuable and things that you should do, you know, like shopping rates, right? shopping insurance, shop, you know, if you get one inspector who says that, you know, you can, foundation needs to be repaired, you know, well, they get paid if they do the foundation. So, you know, check around, get multiple opinions, you know, just like a doctor, if you go into a doctor that says, hey, we need to cut off your leg. Right. You're probably not getting your leg cut off today. You're going to go talk to somebody else. Right. So, but that that's really, you know, my point in that is that, you know, especially from a lender perspective, I may have that program, but maybe my program isn't the best. Right. And if I don't tell you that, how do you know? Right. Okay. You know? So let's talk insurance because we've kind of run into this with one of our first time home buyers. She's buying an older home and the older home is having a hard time getting, well, she's having a hard time getting the insurance that she needs because of the older home. So kind of talk to me about where we're headed with that and what is available to her. Well, the the toughest things in in markets where there's like a lot of claims for the same things over a period of time. And where we are, it's all hail. and Right. Well, we've had, you know, in the last five years, we've had a good number of hail storms. Right. We've also had at least, at least two hard freezes that I'm aware of that have 
caused pipes to burst. Right. So we're we're in an area where there's been a lot of claims. Right. And it makes it very difficult for the insurance companies to want to insure in an area where there's lots of claims. If if you travel outside of our area, like you know, south by three hours or southeast by three hours, you find areas that don't have those same, you know, number of claims. And there's a lot of overhead and expense from the insurance companies in our specific area that makes it more difficult. And the premiums have gone up. Right. So, you know, from an insurance company's perspective, their thought process is, do I want to insure an older property that is there probably going to be a claim. Right. And we've already had a lot of claims in this area. Right. So there, there's, for that, there's a state program okay. where if for some reason you can't get insurance through other providers, there's a state program that you can sign up for and get insurance. Okay. And we, we dove down that rabbit hole. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, especially for a first time home buyer, they're looking at these insurance programs and it's like, all a foreign language. For sure. You know, so, you know, I looked at it with this particular client and I was like, all right, let's look at each individual item. And I know that her like her eyes glassed over and <laughs> right. she half listened, but right. I I looked at it from the perspective of, okay, here's the things that have happened here recently. We probably need to make sure that we have some, you know, not flood, but water damage coverage. Right. Because I, I know like for myself, the la the freeze that we had where pipes bu bursted everywhere. I had one burst under my sink. Mm -hmm. It was in the middle of the day. You were home. I was home. Yeah. And I got to the curb before it completely destroyed my kitchen. Right. Now, if that had happened at night. Or you'd been gone during the or day. Or I'd, I'd, I'd have come back and been in a puddle. Yeah. And and that's, you know, especially for and I first time home buyers, they're inundated with information. But that particular piece, they need somebody to walk them through. What are all these things? Right. What the heck is personal property coverage? Right. I mean, heck, we, we even talked about insuring handbags. That's, you know. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> so, I mean, that's the thing is I didn't realize that there was a state program that if you can't get insurance through your major carriers, there's a state program. Now, if she does the state program for one year, can she then qualify for the major carriers after that? Well, but she already qualifies for the major carriers. It's just the premium is not good. Okay. So when we looked at it, we looked apples to apples. We compared the state program and the the known the known carrier program. Right. And the difference was like five hundred dollars a year, but there were other little things in it that I was just like, if it's me, as a first time home buyer. I would probably do the one that's five hundred dollars more a year, mm -hmm. just because of the little things that are different, mm -hmm. okay. and, and those little things are big enough, you know, especially with what's going on in our area. Right. That if we have a hard freeze and you have a pipe burst, I want to have that that coverage, that that flooding coverage, and you know, even though I read it, that that's a little bit outside of my lane. Right. I understand insurance, but I I said. You need to reach back out to this insurance provider and ask this question. Right. If I have a pipe burst, do I have coverage? And that's, you know, haven't heard back yet, but my, my guess is that's what it is. But if it's not in there, we talked about it enough that she'll likely have it added. But, you know, it we, we are at least right now in a spot where insurance and replacement costs have kind of went this way. Yeah, they're going up. And, and the, the premiums have gone that way as well. Uh, but that's just our area. That's not every area. So if there's an area across the country where there's been a lot of claims, mm -hmm. I mean, like right now, I know Southern California had a yeah. ton of rain. Yeah. And there's probably a ton of claims out there. And the people who didn't have any flooding coverage, they're in trouble. Especially those houses that are hanging off the cliff. Well, I mean, <laughs> are they still hanging off the cliff? <laughs> I saw that somewhere on the verge, but right. yeah. Okay. So. For her, she did talk to multiple insurance agents and got multiple quotes. So and it's a lot of information. A lot of information. But she had help dissecting that information mm -hmm. and making sure that she knew which path to go down. Right. So when it comes to your loan, your insurance, you definitely want to talk to multiple sources and um, multiple trusted sources, right? Because I right. think there's always the people that will sell you on anything. And then before you know it, it wasn't a good policy, especially when they're looking, especially first-time homebuyers, when they're looking at their monthly budget, 
And we kind of touched on this before that we have to stay within this parameter and they'll take the 2% deductible or the 3% deductible. Well, they don't even know what that means. Right. And then when we have that hailstorm or we have that water flood and that deductible is 3%, I mean, that could really hurt somebody who's on a really tight budget. So right. and I think the these two policies that we were looking at, she had a, it's called all other perils. Yeah. Outside of wind and hail. Right. Because we, we that's how our policies are set up. So all other perils, the deductible was like a third of the wind and hail deductible. Mm -hmm. And when you look at it, I mean, yeah, I mean that that's that's a big deal. Right. You know, because you didn't then don't have to have a catastrophic claim in order for the insurance to help you out some. Right. Uh, but you know, the those things are there's so many different variables in it that I think that from an insurance perspective, you have to find an agent who's willing to look at all of it with you. Right. And and much like a, a lender, look at the different programs and parameters and have somebody who honestly goes, you know, maybe it's not mine's not the best. Mm -hmm. You should do that one. For sure. And that and that's that's really hard to find. And I think that a lot of good realtors try to, you know to align themselves with people who do that. Right. And if you're an agent listening and you don't do that, you should. You should. Because it, it makes that first time home buying process easier because now you've got people that you're working with that are honest with the people who are buying mm -hmm. so that they don't turn around and walk into a nightmare later. Right. I always, you know, I always tell people, if you want to interview multiple real estate agents, you should, you know, absolutely. Usually when I get people in that are first time home buyers, they've been a referral most of the time, referral right. from a past client or something like that. But I give them a whole breakdown of the plan or what, how it's going to all go down, multiple lenders that they can call, multiple inspectors that they're going to be able to call. Of course, they can bring anybody else to the table that they want to bring to the table. And a lot of times they will have another lender that they've brought to the table. And I always say, you know what, you might want to call just a couple more to make sure that that's a good um, person for you. Right. You might find a better deal. Same thing with inspectors, you know. So we we kind of do the same thing as realtors. But I will say as, as a, a realtor, the most important thing that I do is similar to what you said. If it isn't in my wheelhouse, referring it out. So I will refer people out if it isn't something that I can do commercial, not something I'm going to going to touch on because I'm not versed on all of the lingo that goes with that. Or if it's an area outside of my service area, I'm going to refer them out, but I'm going to research who is going to be a great fit for them. Just like you've got great land lenders and you've got all of those people in your tool bag. Realtors should have that as well. So if you're interviewing multiple real estate agents, I would tell you, you need to ask them, do you have a great vendor list that in the future I can tap into for home improvements or refi if I want to refi with, and I did a builder loan, I want to refi. Do you have good lenders? Yes. I think that's an important part of what a realtor brings to the table other than their knowledge well, of the market. It sounds to me like what we're saying for a first time home buyer is that you're going to spend a lot of time doing research. If you're interviewing multiple agents, how long do you think it should take to, to talk to three different agents? Well, I only need about an hour of your time. Okay, so, so, so really it should only take three hours. Three hours. Okay. But a lot of them, you know, I've noticed a lot of real estate agents won't sit down with you, and I am an in-person, I want to sit down with you, not really interested in Zooming with you, um, because I, I know that this is just a very – uh, emotional purchase and I want to make sure that we're a good fit. So for me, it's sitting down with you. And if you aren't willing to give me the 45 minutes to an hour, then, you know, maybe I'm not the best fit because I want to make sure to become a, a real estate agent for life. Right. right. I want to help right. you for life. So I want to become more than guess, just that. I guess I'm kind of the same way when it comes to loans, but I think that people, they, they don't understand that when I say, I'm a resource and I want to help. They think they, they, the perception is that it's a sale. Right. And I think if you're talking to the right person and you can gauge that for sure, if somebody says, Hey, send me the other estimates that you've got and we'll look at them apples to apples and see which one's the best one for you. Right. And honestly, if mine isn't the best, 
I'm right. going to direct you to the person who is. And you've done that a lot of times with our new I, construction people. I do it all the time. Yeah, with new construction, and they'll say, Dave said he's not the best, and I should, I'd should, i be crazy not to take this. Well, there you go. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Right. But but the, the critical part of that is if you still have questions while you're doing it, whether I'm helping you or not, you can still call me. Yeah, absolutely. And I and I think that that that's for some people that's like, what? Yeah. You're not doing it, but you're gonna help me. And I, I think that across all industries, I think we should be more like that. Yes. And there's a lot of people that there's a lot of distrust because people don't do that. Right. As a habit. Right. So uh the insurance piece, I I don't know how you make it more easy to understand aside from taking each of the policies and putting them next to each other and just asking somebody. Yes. You know, hey, would you want to look at these with me? Because, you know, what happens most of the time with insurance is that I think that agents change the coverages to be slightly different to change what their premium is so they're not the same. So when you call an insurance agent and you go, hey, make these, make yours the same as this one. Mm -hmm. I think you'll see that the premium is a lot the same. Yeah. You know, and yeah. that's kind of like the the client we're talking about. We put those two things together, and I was like, the reason this one's five hundred dollars more is because it has more coverages. Right. And you know, there's just I, 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 I know that the agents that I refer people to will do that. Mm -hmm. uh, I just don't know that everybody does, and for a first time home buyer, that's. That's something you really need to do. Yeah, for sure. So just to wrap it all up, ask your questions, get multiple people to help you, make sure that you are getting more than just one opinion on your loan or your insurance, even your real estate agent. Get more than one opinion and see if they're the right fit. See if they service the area, especially real estate agents, that you're interested in purchasing in. So um, anything else you want to add? I think that's pretty much it. Awesome. Choices. Choices. You do have choices. That yep. is for sure. You do. All right. If you want to get a hold of Dave, how can they do that? You can call me at 972-896-8790. And to get a hold of us, 214-662-9308. And remember, if you know anyone wanting to buy in the United States, we can help them find the perfect lender and the perfect real estate agent.